history is so important because it's the same ones ruling over us since 2000 years. Therefore history repeats itself all the time because the same techniques are being used by our masters to keep us down. Therefore similar patterns appearing all the time. So it's very important to compare the patterns and similarities throughout history with the actual situation of today. Let's look at the Justinian plague of the year 541, which came out of Egypt, of course, because our masters are alchemists and Satanists who have no problem with their demonology to create a deadly bug against their slaves. The Justinian plague of 541 probably killed 100 million Europeans or 60% of Europe. And it's a fact. It came by boat from Egypt, a deadly cargo imported by someone. Here you can read it. The contagion arrived in Roman Egypt in 541, spread around the Mediterranean Sea until 544, and persisted in Northern Europe and the Arabian Peninsula. And here, according to contemporary sources, the outbreak in Constantinople was thought to have been carried to the city by infected rats on grain ships arriving from Egypt. Pharaoh. And in 541, the year the Justinian plague arrived, Pharaoh's nobility had already left Rome for France because of the Germanic invasions by the Vandals 85 years before, in 455. Thus French, and no more Latin, becoming the language of our masters. And uh, therefore, we are still being ruled by Rome with their senates and governments and crushed by their legions in a contemporary uniform. As Hitler said, one people, one empire, one leader and one Gestapo. Ein Volk, ein Reich. Ein Führer und ein Police for the whole world. So, what pattern can we see happening concerning the ancient Rome? First, they waged endless wars, genociding the Europeans and expanding all over Europe. Then, Rome got invaded by the Gauls or Celts in 390 and in 410 by the Visigoths and 455 by the Vandals. Then the Pharaonic elite of Rome escaped to the Gaul or France, expanding their nobility and built their Pharaonic castles as the Egyptian castle of Buhen, that looks just like their castles in Europe of Pharaoh. Then, 85 years later, the Egyptian Justinian plague cleaned it all up, and that was the end of Rome. So, the pattern seems to be one, wars, two, to get invaded, three, the masters leave, and four, a pandemic bug war. Now let's compare this pattern 
with the present day situation. For the new Rome of today, it was the same thing. Two world wars and all the other wars after and before. Then a massive invasion by Muslims, Africans and whatnot. Then our masters seem to have abandoned Europe, America, Australia, etc. Abandoned our economy, abandoned our culture, abandoned our lives. A total government and military exfiltration of the elite of Pharaoh. And now the final bug war cleansing for the reset after. And funny enough, the same cyclists can be seen in ancient Rome. One wars, two invasion, C abandon ship, and four bug war. Coincidence? No. Natural law? No. Man made or rather Pharaoh made? Yeah, sure. The last time our masters abandoned ship, they left Rome and went to France. But where did they go now? About which there are many rumors like Astana, Antarctica, Neon, and even leave the planet entirely. This is why they abandoned Afghanistan in rapid evac, as it's just part of a total abandonment, in order to start all over again somewhere else, in place or in time. Pharaoh's abandonment of Afghanistan, followed by a simple walk-in by the Taliban, is being portrayed by the Western media as an Afghan victory by those brutal Taliban who rape the women and kill everybody on their way. Well, apparently this mean lie machine of Western media can only lie, with every single word coming out of Pharaoh's lie machine is a lie. Some Afghan women have been lured in by evil Freemason forces and seduced by their pink list killers to become like Western women. Whereas a man in the West, you get ordered around by aggressive women pink list killers in any government office you go. Just look at the pink list killer logo with the inverse satanic cross, which will knock you out with a fist if you're just a man. With a circle for the compass and a square in the inverse cross, saying for the initiated square and compass, sold to us with an innocent smile on top. Oh, please come and help us and risk your neck for the princess. Who oh, will turn into a male hating monster when freed? Oh, very good, Sahib Shondrosh. You very good man, Sahib. We Taliban not as stupid as we look. Yeah, mate, I'm tired of the West with endless lies. Everything is a gross lie in the West. Only lies, 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 lies. Here, mate, look, I've got the same hat and beard as you guys. So, can I come now? I'm so sick and tired of the West, really. Yeah, look, if I put the words the Islamic em Emirate of Afghanistan into Google Translate, to get the Pashto writing of it and put it in YouTube like I did here and then punch search, then you get the real images 
of local Afghan YouTubers that show the Taliban being welcomed as heroes who liberated their country from US oppression and US occupation, showing happy people smiling and being relaxed, saying there's no bloodshed, showing very calm and civilized Taliban giving interviews to local YouTubers. Here, here you can see it. You see all the, it's everywhere their language. But a lot, a lot has been censored already, you know, they're censoring it. You see, you know, this is, this is, this is peaceful stuff here, you know, look at that. Peaceful. And the other one too here on top here. Yeah, look, they're all cheering, you know. It's no, nobody running, no bloodshed. You know, and, and think about the crisis actors, you know. But again, a lot has already been censored, you know, by the um, by the enemy within. Well, they're mostly left now. Well, actually, I looked a couple of days back, and there was already a lot more. They already took took away a lot of things. Now there's only like two years ago, four months ago, it has already been censored. Everything, eh? or almost everything. Yeah, look. These are. I think these are the normal women without a inverse. A uh, Christian cross, and uh, with without square and compass and all the rubbish, you know they show in all the Western newspapers. No, this is from there. You know you, you get this if you punch their letters in it. Look how she's smiling. You know they're happy. They're happy. They're being freed. And this is on Tolo News. And you see, you see the, the Taliban dudes here standing behind here. And this is from August the 9th, 19th, or like this one here, from Afghanistan News, Kabul, first day under Taliban rule, August the 17th, 2021, half a million views. Now look, they're smiling, they're all relaxed, they're just standing there, you know. Uh, and, and this is what you get if you punch in there, letters, you know. Have them speak for themselves, you know. Don't trust the Western media. Or like here from August the 20th, 2021, you see in their lingo from a channel called Kabul Lovers. You know, he's, he's, you know the reporters say, hey, you come here, Taliban, you know, I want to interview you. You know, this is nothing. Or, you know, like here, people are happy. Look at them, you know, L look at the little picture here. They're with flags and, hey, we're happy, freedom, US go home, you know? Look at that. Look, they're all happy. Look at that. It's like after a football match or something. Look at that. We're being lied to people. Or like here. A YouTuber interviewing the Taliban here on August the 18th, 2021, on a channel called Hamayon Afghan Official. Right? Well, I mean, can't you see it? They are, these are completely different pictures uh, we see here as, the, as what BBC, CNN, and all the other liars they're showing us. Eh? with their pink list killers, with the inverse Christian crosses around their necks. Uh, or like here, I mean, this is a little YouTuber, 6,000 views on August the 21st. And these guys came apparently on August the 17th. You know, Taliban shaking hands with the traditional Afghan. And, you know, if you look at the little picture here, they're all standing here together, shake hands, you know, and traditional guys here uh, with the with the Taliban yeah they're clapping hands here 
I mean, this is not the same what the Western media are showing us, eh? Uh, Hewitt's Press. I mean, give him a hand, people, and leave some nice comments to these people. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can put the links in the um, under the video. If I don't forget, I usually forget all these things. Or this one here, I put the name in in the in the Pashto like writings, and it it came out in English on August the twentieth. First Friday celebration of uh, Kandahar, Afghanistan after takeover. It's a celebration, eh? A happy. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Look, yeah, they're all sitting there, and I don't know, it's like on a marketplace here, or they're praying, Friday praying, and market, everything at the same time. No killings, no bloodshed, nobody's getting stoned or, you know, or like uh, uh, terrorized or. Well, I mean, look, look, at it, look at it yourself. I mean, there are ten thousands of videos, you know. This is Kavi Khan, just a YouTuber, 30,000 views. Just a YouTuber making his own video, you know. Uh, nobody's getting whipped or punished or nothing of the kind. Oh, I'm so sick of Western lies where everything has become a lie in our part of the world. Like the lies of President Biden saying that the US abandoned Afghanistan out of human compassion. So no more American lives will get lost over there. Oh, since when the lives of US soldiers are taken into value by the President and his Freemason government? Dispensable soldiers, dispensable slaves, dispensable armies, dispensable people. Well, bye bye Biden. Get out of here. Back in Europe, these government war criminals and pharaonic liars founded the Bilderberger by the Prince of Darkness. Bernhard zur Lippe Bisterfeld, a high member of the SS and friend of 007 Ian Fleming, friend of the British Royals, and he was a member of the Order of the Garter. More than 10 years ago, I went protesting against the Bilderbergers at the Bilderberg Conference of St. Moritz in Switzerland in 2011. I gave many interviews there, but this one here was the only one left I could find. All the other interviews all got genocided. So it is here. There's the title, Bilderbeck Meeting 2011, Collectivo Temis. Oh, what a nice name, eh? Temis. Temis is the Greek uh, Ma'at, where the 42, um, the 42 um, principalities of Ma'at came from, now called the Ten Commandments of the Bible. So that's probably the reason they're still there. Collectivo Temis, you know, probably, well, I'm 100% sure, you know, Freemasons or children of Freemasons, descendants of Pharaoh. Funny, eh? Like here, you see a crown because it's all royal stuff. And here it says Bilderberg. And this word here, I suppose that means castle. So 10 years back, I went filming the hotel castle Bilderberg 
of the Bilderberger in a sort of castle next to Napoleon's pyramid in the Netherlands to be seen in this film here. Here you can see the title of the pyramid show. And the part bag here, bag, as in builder bag or Bilderberg in English, means a mountain in German, and I guess in Dutch too, as it is in Afrikaans as well, in a country that is as flat as a pancake and the highest top no higher than probably 50 meters or so. So anyone looking for flat earth? I think I just found it for you. Now, who would give a name referring to a mountain in a country where there are no such things as mountains? But there are mountains in Germany, Berge or Berg. Here from the a Google translation from German into English, Berg, mountain, as in Bilderberg, Bilderberger, Bilderberg. Just as the first part of the name Bilder. Bilder is not Dutch, which I checked in the internet. Bilder is a German word meaning pictures in plural. It says the Google translation German Bilder, as in Bilderberg, it means pictures in English. Bilderberg, Bilderbergers. So, altogether, Bilderberg, it says mountains of pictures for Bilderberger. So here in the Google Translate from German, Bilder, Bag, we have to put a hyphen in between. And into English, it says pictures, mountain. Yeah, pictures for Bilder and mountain for Bag or Berg. Mountains of pictures. And mountains of pictures refers to the only place in history where we have seen that and it was also in Germany where there were mountains of shoes shoe bag the shoe berg the shoe burger mountains of glasses brille berg in German Brille Burger, Mountains of Human Hair, Der Haarberg, 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 Haarberger, and Mountains of Pictures as some relic of all the extinguished lives. Bilderberg, Bilderberger. Bilderberg, Bilderbergers, Mountains of Pictures. The Nazis called this place in Auschwitz with all the stripped leftovers of their eliminated previous owners, Canada or Canada in German. You can see it, Canada which is an old German joke sounding like Kainada, meaning nobody there in German, from a book from the 19th century about a German settler arriving in Canada. There was only wilderness at that time and no people to see. Kainada for Canada, nobody there. Just like in 1945, after the work had been done. These are typical aristocratic jokes like Bilderberg, Canada, and even the name Auschwitz carries a joke, as Witz in German at the end of the name 
It means a joke in German. And believe me, I heard all these things when I infiltrated the Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars. How else could I know all this, huh? Therefore, the SS Prince Bernhard chose the name Bilderberger as a reference to total control over humanity that Pharaoh could exert over their victims in Auschwitz, trapped inside like stuck into a mouse trap. Also, like for those who will experience this soon, those who refuse to accept Pharaoh's poison in their veins, or 28,000 defenseless white Christian Boer children in South Africa, all murdered in British made concentration camps by Pharaoh's nobility, Lord Kitchener, and his a bloodthirsty pal, Lord Winston Churchill, born in the Blenheim Palace, son of a duke. So the royals and their victorious queen could steal the boar's gold and diamonds, which the boars had found. Here you can see the victorious queen, Victoria who waged a lot of dirty wars. Napoleon's pyramid is called the Pyramid of Austerlitz, and the Bilderberg Hotel next to it, the castle of the Kirkibosch. Here, don't know really how to pronounce it. And the whole area has a high pharaonic density of obelisks, emperors, Pyramids, kings, queens, Bilderbergers, octagonal palaces, and most of all, royal Nazis. So why am I showing this to you? Because here was the, uh, the house of the German emperor when he got kicked out of Germany. And somewhere... Uh, here was the, the Austerlitz, was this pyramid of, the, um, of Napoleon, I think it was like here. The Bilderberg Hotel also like next to it. And I think like here was the palace where the, the Prince of Darkness, the SS Prince, was, um, was living, the Prince Bernhard. So he was living right next to the German Emperor himself also deep into Nazism. In the very vicinity of Napoleon's pyramid and the Bilderberg castle of the Kirkibosch, you'll find just a few miles away the castle of Dorn of the German Emperor Wilhelm II, where he lived from 1918 to 1941 which they merely call a house, in order to make us forget that the German Emperor Wilhelm II was living there. And here you can see this pharaonic emperor in 1917, with a Freemason skull and bones logo on his hat. Just to give you an idea where the Nazi SS actually derived from. Yes, the nobility, including their Nazi Templar cousins of the New World Order in Switzerland, of course. And the charming logo on his hat means, let's go and kill the white race. Let's destroy Europe. And here, on his breast, you can see all the logos, you know, the octagon, a couple of Templars crosses, the sash, most surely in blue for the war against us, here another crown, 
yeah, the Templar's cross, an octagon, you know. So it says octagon of the Nazi Templars on his breast. Because they all know exactly where they come from. And that their ancestors of this worldwide Per A Big House nobility come out of Pharaoh's Egypt. Templars Cross Pyramid 3D 2D. So the Templars Cross on his breast in 2D, it presents, it represents the 3D pyramid and as he can't put a 3d pyramid on his chest he had to fold it out and put it in 2d on his chest and they all do and the mother of the german emperor was a daughter of english queen victoria the killer queen murdering 28,000 defenseless women and children in South Africa. Q, the Queen of the Heavens, Isis. Same thing, same origin. Ain't it so, Mr. Trump? And right next to where the German Emperor and grandson of the Killer Queen Victoria lived, is the royal palace of the SS Prince Bernhard, where he lived for 30 years, with a huge obelisk right next to it, called the Needle of Waterloo, where many of us died for them in Waterloo. And from 1936 on, and even before, the SS Prince Bernhard met regularly with the Skull and Bones Emperor Wilhelm II, both in the Netherlands and very close neighbours. And in that very same area, with that high density of pharaohs, there's also the castle of Drakenstein, which means Dragonstone, and is octagonal as in Octogon, the top of the Nazi Templars. It belongs to the Queen Beatrice. And this castle is right next to where the Skull and Bones Emperor of Germany lived and the SS Prince Bernhard. Therefore, the eight death sacrifice for octagon in front of a huge obelisk and obelisks are usually used as tombs for pharaohs on a cemetery like these pharaohs here of the dutch royal house of orange and here it says eight death so there you see, there's the obelisk. It's called the Needle, like the Needle of London. And apparently there were some people in the hospital and died later. Uh, I can tell you, you know, they needed the number eight, you know, for the ritual. So these people would have survived their injuries if it wouldn't have been needed the number eight for the ritual. So in this dense pharaonic fantasy world area full of ss princes kings skull and bones emperors castles obelisks bilderbergers pyramids dragonstone castles unicorn order of the garter rituals evil deeds and nazi templar ss it's like being in some fantasy film like Harry Potter and whatnot, through which our masters try to make believe our children in unicorns, dragons, and magic castles. 
which have an entirely different meaning for our masters, making me think of what Arizona Wilder said about these royal dragons and their appetite for children. Here is your dragon with the royal lion. To make the world of evil seem harmless to our children, taking it with them into adulthood. And um, all these evil rituals must have driven the husband of the queen completely nuts. Plus some more suspicious deaths, death cases running in this richest family of the entire world. Klaus Georg von Ansberg, another SS prince in the entirely German house of Orange and the father of the actual king, Order of the Garter, William of Orange, whose father and grandfather were Germans, plus the rest of his German ancestry. Now here it says, yeah, in, 19, in 1944, Klaus was conscript, conscripted in, into the German Wehrmacht. Well, let, wait a minute, this is not possible. He was not in the Wehrmacht, he was in the SS. Because Adolf Hitler, he had the Prinzen Erlass in 1940, that no German prince could go into the Wehrmacht. So he was in the SS. Just another lie, you know, to, uh, to cover it all up. Eh? And he was in the uh, Deutsches Jungvolk, the, in several Nazi youth organizations, and the Hitler Youth, just like the other Prince of Darkness, the grandfather of the actual king, Order of the Garter, King William. It's a whole house of SS and Nazis and rituals and the whole shebang of Pharaoh. Therefore, the prince can be seen here in the death skull uniform of the SS, most likely participating in all sorts of genocides and butcheries, because it is impossible he was in the Wehrmacht, because of Hitler's Prinzenerlass from 1940. Everything they tell us in their media is a lie, people. In fact, all nobles went into the SS, where they could kill without danger for their own lives, as the SS was a wave of murderers after the wave of battling German soldiers of the Wehrmacht, cleaning up the way so there was no more danger for the SS. Therefore, the SS are the very same as the Knights Templars. A bunch of cowards, murdering, wealthy noblemen, full of occultism. While the Europeans did the real fighting for them. The Nazi Templars of Octogon and their Swiss base. In the Alps. I've already told you about the other royal SS Prince Josias to Waldeck and Piemont, whom you can see here, who next to his crimes in the Buchenwald concentration camp also personally helped executing the real German nationalists of the German workers in the Night of the Long Knives, in the summer of 1934, replacing all the normal officers of the SA Sturmabteilung with aristocrats of the SS, like the SS Prince Bernhard, 
here you can see he's a real prince with a Templar's cross all over, white gloves like in a Freemason lodge. Seems to be a, a skull of death here. And this one here, it says square and compass, as I told you, which all comes out of Pharaoh, eh? Pharaoh's nobility. So there are four squares in it, and the whole thing is in a circle for the compass. So if I scroll down a little bit, and you can find it in many other places here, what I'm going to read for you. Um, the whole story is interesting. So here it says, Valdek was severe hard-driving and ambitious. To cite an example, he oversaw an SS execution commando. So the SS executed the SR. Uh -huh. That's what I'm telling you. The real Germans were replaced by the aristocracy. This is how Pharaoh got rid of the real Germans, of the German people, normal Germanic people. These Pharaohs got rid of them. Yeah. He oversaw an SS execution commando at the Stadelheim prison near Munich during the Röhm purge in June 1934, the night of the long knives, when he had to order the executions of several former comrades. Yeah, comrades. Well, he, he, told, he gave him the name of comrades. He just stabbed them in the back. It gave him no pleasure, but it was necessary to the future of the Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, which he would defend with his own life, if necessary. Wenn alle untreue werden, so bleiben wir doch treue. Yeah? That means untreue, it means not faithful, and, so, and we stay faithful. That means the real Germanic, normal Germans, they were not faithful. But within the aristocracy, you know, the SS, they stayed faithful, but to a completely other thing, you know, they wrecked Germany and they murdered German people. So a prince here yeah, and the rest of them, you know, they were all aristocrats in the SS in the beginning, you know, and at least the higher officers, they still stayed like SS aristocratic officers. They murdered the SR, you know, the Sturmabteilung with uh, Rome, the Rome purge. That's what I've been telling you, people. There's a war within a war. Eh? Read some more if you want. Well, if I think about it, I'll put it in the uh, description. Yeah, there we, there you can read it again. This is the. Um, Valdek und Piemont, Prince Josias, there he is. He killed the Germans. The real German people were murdered by the real enemy within. Yeah. Uh, here, I read it for you. In June 1934, Hitler uh, directed Josef Sepp Dietrich, the then head of the personal SS bodyguard unit, to lead murder squads of SS officers, read aristocracy, and man to round up and shoot the leaders of the SR, read normal German people, Workers' Party, in what became known as the Night of the Long Knives. Dietrich had instructed von Waldeck to go to the Stadelheim prison, where Hitler had previously been in prison and where he had written Mein Kampf, and to make arrangements there for the reception and execution of the SA leader Ernst Röhm and other leaders. This is where the, uh, the aristocracy rounded up the real Germans, the real German nationalists. And then went, went on, the SS, they went on to pretend to be real Germans fighting for Germany while killing real Germans who wanted actually the best for Germany. Whereas the SS and the whole Nazi bunch, they didn't want the best for Germany. Can't you see it? I can't understand, really, how the worldwide neo-Nazis and nationalists can be so 
dumb and don't see the real enemy. But instead of that, even believe the enemy's propaganda lies, giving the usual scapegoat, while people no jaywalkers to see far and wide at the origins of two world wars and all the other wars after and before. Sorry, dear neo-Nazis, I just can't find any. But I've got the real enemy of our white race. Well, real good in the crosshairs, though. Now, listen carefully. This SS Prince General Josias Tuvaldek und Piermont was even a nephew of Queen Emma of the Netherlands. As Princess Emma Tuvaldek und Piermont married King Wilhelm III of the Netherlands and she became the Queen of the Netherlands in 1890, just before World War I, being one of the reasons the Germans did not invade the Netherlands in World War I. As the German Emperor already had a German aristocrat on the throne of the Netherlands, where today's Dutch royals are 100% German aristocracy. Not very Dutch Queen Emma Tuvaldek und Piermont and aunt of the Prince SS General von Waldeck was of course the reason that the warmonger and butcher of millions of Europeans, the German Emperor William II Wilhelm the second, could be saved from the Germans and live a happy life in the Netherlands, also called Flat Earth, here to be seen with the Freemason right hand, the hidden hand of Freemasonry, under his jacket, thus enabling the preparations of Nazism and World War II in the hope to reinstall the monarchy in Germany. Therefore, a German queen, Emma of Flat Earth, taking a lot of care of her duties for the constitutional monarchy, the union of the old world order and the new world order, concealing her true monarchic nature. Now here it says, uh, she met personally with every government minister at least once every two weeks to keep herself informed of all political issues and strictly adhered to the rules of the constitutional monarchy. She used the trust she gained by respecting the constitutional forms, by using her influence within political issues she did care about, oh very smart, which resulted in compromises in which she often managed to get her will. Oh, you see, one statesman commented that Emma was efficient because she combined a strong will with soft forms, something that I had not been used to. And this is one of the mottos of in Freemasonry, what uh, President Roosevelt once said. He said, speak softly and act hard. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Theodore Roosevelt. And Queen Emma understood the Freemason trick of hidden hands and verbal concealment very well. And thus, Two world wars were prepared under cover of darkness and nobody saw it coming. 
The SS General Josias II Waldeck und Piermont only served three years in prison after the war for murdering the real German nationalists in 1934 and jaywalkers in Buchenwald. Only three years. So please do not show your children any videos of fairy tales with charming princes riding unicorns returning to their dragonstone castles and don't make your daughter hunger to become a princess making it easier for prince andrew to seduce her on jeffrey's templars island Look, here's Jeffrey's ranch in uh, New Mexico. We all see the square and compass. It says square, it's in a big square with a circle. So it says square and compass. And it's divided. There's also a couple of squares here because it's like a cross or a crosshairs. And there are four parts in it for the concept of four. And the um, here are three parts, one, two, three, three lanes for the concept of three. And it's also the, uh, the sign of the Zodiac as the Zodiac killer or on the Swiss watch. So it's the same symbol as for the symbol of the Zodiac killer here. And I made this video about it here on my Israeli channel. And it's the same title I had in my video on YouTube. It's the same as Jeffrey Epstein has on his uh, New Mexico ranch in um, America. Uh, this aristocratic mass murderer, the SS Prince Josias of Valdeck and Piermont, had a son with his wife, the Duchess Altsburg von Oldenburg, whom they called Wittekind. It means the white child, maybe like the pale horse. And whose godfathers were Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, and who became a lieutenant colonel in the present day German army. You can read it in this website here in Wikipedia, former German nobility in the Nazi party. So Prince Josias and his wife, the Duchess Altburg of Oldenburg, were the parents of Wittekind, Prince of Waldeck and Piermont. Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler were his godfathers. Wittekind, who served in the German armed forces as a lieutenant colonel, succeeded as head of the house of Waldeck and Piermont. When his father died on November the 30th, 1967. So this war criminal here, the Prince war criminal, well, he lived another 30 years in liberty and having a good time, you know while he was a general in this here, in the SS, and murdering people. It's the same one, still ruling today, huh? You can see that, a lieutenant colonel, his son. Same ones, nothing has changed. So, here is the uh, code of arms of the Royal House of Waldeck und Piermont, showing the octagon twice, seven feathers on top for the concept of three plus four making seven the holy number of the pyramid a square in the helmet for the concept of four and three dots next to it indicating square and compass all together and around the cross with four squares there are eight dots for octagon all around it so here is the octagon star and here once more seven feathers it's a concept of three and four together making seven the number of the pyramid three dots here for the concept of three and this is a square for the concept of four and it has a cross in it 
uh, for the concept of four. So it says here square and compass, which is which it says on the helmet. So here's the royal house of Valdek. Um, and here's their coat of arms. Uh, it shows a bit differently than the other one. Here it has three octagons. And I'll show you the one I'll... Here is the, the Dutch-German queen, Emma to Waldeck, owned, uh, owned Piemont, the queen of the uh, Netherlands. It's all in German here. I don't think there was an English version. And here again comes the coat of arms I just filmed for you. Stammwappen in German. So I quickly show you some more of the royal houses in this uh, website on Wikipedia, former German nobility in the Nazi party. And that's why Adolf here is having such a terrific time eh, with the son of the, uh, the emperor, the emperor William II, his son, you know, with an octagon around his neck. And... Okay, let's go. So... The German, the Kingdom of Prussia, yeah. Um, I'm not going to read it all for you. You can do it yourself, you know. And um, okay, here they are. This is uh, all these princes here. Three princes. They were. This is. Um, the, son, the son of um, the Prince August Wilhelm of Prussia, here. And here another prince, so he was in the Sturmabteilung and in the, uh, the Nazis, here too, stormtroopers, Nazis. Um, the Prince Karl of Prussia. Here Prince Alexander of Prussia. They were also, you have to look here then, eh? They're all in the Nazis. Now the Kingdom of Bavaria, next to Switzerland, eh? Yeah, the King Frederick August. Um, here the Kingdom of uh, Württemberg, also next to Swiss Switzerland. Uh, Baldur von Schirach, of course, he was the, the head of the Hitler Youth. He never spent a day in prison. Yeah, they all joined the, the, the NSDAP, the, this one here, the National the, the German Workers' Party. Um, here as well. So I, 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 I can't possibly read that all for you. Right? Look, here you must look here now. It's all, they all, all these princes, they all were in the Nazi party here. You're going to read it there. And the, these are their numbers. This is the, the Duchy of Baden. Um, well, I can't read it all that. Uh, the Duchy of Hesse. And uh, the Grand Duke of Hesse. Look, the Philip of Hesse, second from right. He's always... Pulling his arm up, hey, eh? Heil, heil. Having a nice time, eh? Killing, killing people and killing the Germans. They were all in the NSDA, NSDAP here. So this line here, this column is NS, and this is the military ranks here. Sturmabteilung SSSS, of course, the prince, the old princes with their codes of arms are here, hey. Eh? This is when they joined in 1930. Even the even the ladies, the princess, the princess, they're all in the Nazi party, right? And these are the coat of arms, the double cross here. Showing a lot of lions with crowns, of course. And here the prince, 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 and the SS and the Sturmabteilung, they're all in the Nazi party. 
coat of arms. These are the dates when they joined. All the princes, the, the entire nobility, they're all in the SS people. Yeah, there's some more. Yeah, princess, princess, prince, all in the Nazi party. All of them. This is the uh, Grand Duchy of Mecklenburg Schwerin in the north of Germany. It says NSDAP, the Nazi Party, when they joined military rank, SS uh, title, and this is the Royal House. I could tell you a lot, a lot more about it, but uh, that will take too long. Eh? So just look for yourself now. Eh? And uh, look at the pictures, you know. Uh, I don't see any jaywalkers. I, I, I don't see any. Eh? It's all a lie. And of course, there were some, but they were not real jaywalkers. They were the Erev Rav. And, and the whole nobility here, they come out of the Erev Rav. That's, it means Pharaoh. The Erev Rav, it means Pharaoh. When they crossed the dip, you know, with the, the Exodus, leaving Egypt. Duke Charles Edward. Well, that sounds sort of English. Well, it's one family, you know. He's another grandson of Queen Victoria, the Killer Queen. It's all one family. It's the Per A, where the word Pharaoh comes from. Oh, here's an, an, another all English here. We're all in the Nazi Party, probably. Mm. Charles Edward, yeah. Charles Edward held the same SS rank as Prince. He was a general. Well, Charles Edward was a general. Whoa, Charles Edward between Hermann Goering and Joseph Goebbels here. Mussolini, well, he was called Il Duce, means the Duke. Living in a castle, married to an aristocrat, so and he lived two years in Switzerland where they taught him. Yeah, Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha, Nazi Party when they joined the military rank, Prince Rainer of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha. A lovely bunch, aren't they? Sturmabteilung. Anyway, they're all, they're all, this, the left column, they're all filled up. They're all in the Nazi party with the numbers. It's a very good site, a very good um, YouTube site here. The Duchy of Sachs Meining. They all joined the, uh, the Nazi party, all these princes, all, you know. And maybe if it doesn't show a military rank, you know, it's even more dangerous because they hide it. You know, like talk softly and keep a stick behind, eh? Roosevelt. Here too, uh, princess, a prince in the another one. He looks like the uh, the SS prince. Well, he was in the SS. He was an SS prince of Lippe, just like the uh, the prince Bernhard. He was in the Nuremberg trials. Well, he never did a day in prison, of course. Ah, oh, here he is, the Prince Bernhard. He was in the Sturmabteilung. He joined the uh, the Nazi party in 1933. And then he became a wing commander in the RF. Well, can, can you believe it? Eh? He was a friend of George VI and Churchill and Ian Fleming. They just turned their vests around, eh? Yeah, all the more princes, all Prince Karl, Christian, Prince Ludwig, all in the Nazi party. And they probably all were in the SS as well. Just murdering and raping people all over. What the aristocracy have always been doing. Yeah, Schaumburg Lippe, the principality. More princes. All in the Nazi party having, uh, what is this, the... I can't read that here, but anyway, it's a Sturmabteilung. 
and they betrayed the other, the real Germans in the Sturmabteilung, and they, they murdered them all in the night of the long knives. Eh? The Principality of Schwarzburg, uh, it's like Blackwater. Principality, here we are, Waldeck Piermont. Uh, I already told you enough about this one. Here we've got Josias. Even his sister was in the, or his wife was in the, in the Nazi party. His sister as well. Principality of Reus Greiz. Uh, Principality of Reus Gera. Uh, all in the, in the Nazi party, all the princes. These ones too. Oh, okay, that was it. Hey, people. And I. Uh, even the Dutch king, William II, from 1792 to 1849, was a son of German Emperor of Prussia, Wilhelm I, it says. So King William II was the son of William I and Wilhelmine of Prussia. You know, so... Well, the whole flat earth, the whole flat earth is German. So here you can see it once more, one more time: the killer queen Victoria here, and the grandson. Her grandson is the Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany, the the, the World War One butcher of Europeans, and King George V is a cousin of his, together with the Tsar Nicholas II. They're all cousins. It's one pair a big family. Who sent you Europeans into the war and you die by the millions and now they want to stick their poison into your butt so when the the first world war German Emperor Wilhelm II and grandson of Queen Victoria lived in exile together with the rest of this bunch of German aristocratic Nazis ruling over the Netherlands he was vividly hoping for Nazi success in order to restore the monarchy. So here in Wikipedia, the abdication of Wilhelm II. In the early 1930s, Wilhelm apparently hoped that the success of the German Nazi party would stimulate interest in a restoration of the monarchy with his eldest grandson as the fourth Kaiser. And he was a fanatic anti-Jaywalker and absolutely thriving during the anti-Jaywalker pogroms of 1938 during the Crystal Night. So here is views on the capital, views on Nazism in Wikipedia of Wilhelm II, the German Emperor. And um, here, he had the nerve to say that he agreed with the Jewish pogroms and understood why they had come about. And here, a little bit down here. here it says that he is anti-England, anti-Jaywalkers, anti-Freemasons. And he argued that the English ruling class were Freemasons, thoroughly infected by Judah. You remember the picture being him like, you know, with the hidden hand? So Wilhelm asserted that the British people must be liberated from Antichrist uh, Judah. We must drive Judah out of England, just as he had been chased out of the continent. That was the German Emperor, living in the Netherlands, being a friend of the, the Prince of Darkness, the SS Prince. And all his sons were in the SS and in the, uh, the German Nazi party. And um, you can't take a single word seriously what these pharaonic liars tell you accompanied by their charming smiles or serious expressions. The guy was a Freemason, there is no doubt. 
you don't put your hidden hand like this, like an important person like this, the hidden hand of Freemasonry. And he was also in the Order of the Garter. The lie is their biggest weapon, just as we can see today with the poison they want to put in our veins. Just turn everything around what the politician, kings, queens and media say. And you'll have the truth. As simple as that. It's all inversed speeds of evil. Now, you picture the guy again with his Freemason hand, the hidden hand under his jacket. And I'll read it out for you again here in Wikipedia about Wilhelm II. So picture the emperor with the hidden hand and listen. He argued that the English ruling classes were Freemasons, thoroughly infected by Judah. Liars. And there's a reason to it. Even foreign nations, like here the Marshall Islands, they have made stamps about this terrible happening. It says the bombing of Rotterdam, low countries invaded in 1940. So when the Netherlands surrendered in May 1940, because the Nazis started to bomb civilians, as in Rotterdam, with thousands killed, he wrote to Adolf Hitler, My Führer, I congratulate you and hope that under your marvelous leadership, the German monarchy will be restored completely. Here you can read it. Being true aristocratic gratitude to the country and people who saved him in 1918 giving him asylum when he got kicked out of Germany. Thanks a lot. The SS Prince General Josias Tuvaldek von Piermont was even a good friend of the Dutch Queen Wil Wilhelmina <coughs> of the very same Waldeck family and with her son-in-law SS Prince Bernhard all around. So he can read from this website here. The Air Prince, hereditary prince, had an extraordinary and varied career and enjoyed an especially close relationships with Himmler, Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, and the eldest son of the last ruling prince in Waldeck the nephew of the King of Württemberg and the Dutch Queen. So you see how from the aristocratic side World War II got organized in the Netherlands in collaboration with Octogon of the Swiss Nazi Templars. Because in fact there is the main monarchic Old World Order vertical rule there is the Swiss Templar New World Order horizontal rule of the Republic. And yet another party, the third party, which is the union of both of them through the Order of the Garter. And Emperor William II, the Freemason, he belonged to the Order of the Garter through his grandma. Queen Victoria, the, qu the killer queen. Here you can read it. Wilhelm finished high school on his 18th birthday, received as a present from his grandmother, Queen Victoria, the Order of the Garter. And this is why he must have been a Freemason, because if you belong to the Order of the Garter, you must be a Freemason. It's not possible otherwise. And this is not just the black nobility, what some people say, but it's the entire pharaonic nobility who are 
a huge menace to humanity and a danger to our freedom. They are the Per A, worldwide big house of Pharaoh's aristocracy, ruling over their slave race, and who cluster together in certain areas of the world, as shown here in Germany and in the Netherlands, or the Rambouillet area southwest of Paris, where I also filmed for you. The SS Prince Bernhard to Lippe Bisterfeld and husband of the Dutch Queen had worked for IG Farben, the company that produced Tuklon B gas to kill the jaywalkers and their children. He was a member of the SS and the SA Sturmabteilung which he left in 1934, probably betraying the Sturmabteilung and helping to execute all original German workers, nationalists, who were rising up against the nobility and the elite. Uh, here it says, Bernhardt, studied law at the University of Lausanne, Switzerland and he was in the um, in the SS, you can see that here and the prince eventually went to work for the German chemical giant IG Farben in the early 1930s then the world's fourth largest company making it so logical that this elite and the nobility eliminated the German nationalist workers of the SA in the Night of the Long Knives. The SA Sturmabteilung just wanted freedom for the German people and enough to eat for their children. This SS prince had his own personal flight squadron called 322, which is the concept of 3 plus 4, as in the Yale Skull and Bones number. Here you can read it, the Dutch 322 Fighter Squadron in the RAF, RAF, can you imagine? It says one of the main initiators of this squadron was Prince Bernhard, the German son-in-law of Queen Wilhelmina, who lived in exile in London. How can an SS prince fly for the RAF? You know, it's, it's all the same bunch of people. You see the same number as the flight squadron of the SS prince flying in the RAF. The skull and bones number, which adds up to seven, which is the concept of three and four. Square and compass. Yeah, there you go, the Skull and Bones 322 Royal Squadron. Yeah, with a Templar's cross on it. It's a Royal Squadron, you see? That's why it's 322, because the, the, this is where Freemasonry comes from. It's Royal, and it's the Elite. And here it some, says something in Dutch, but uh, well, I don't know what that means. And as he founded the Bilderberger Group in 1954, it must therefore be clear that the Bilderberger are a group of royal Nazis of the old world's order and using the tools and facilities of the new world's order. Yeah, there he is, the Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Charming fellow, isn't he? Not only the royal German houses of Zuwaldeck und Piermont and Zuerlippe Bisterfeld and their genuine princes were in the SS and giving us two world wars, but there's a whole list of German royal Nazi houses, English G royal Nazi houses, Dutch royal Nazi houses, etc who were so 
and who are also the biggest enemy of the German people and of all of us until this very day, with all these aristocrats in the world and collaborating with the octagon of the Swiss Nazi Templars, their base, Switzerland. Nowadays, in Germany and in the entire world, they all hide it mostly. The aristocracy hides their aristocratic nobility origins, just like they've always been hiding their pharaonic origins. Like here, the former defense minister, Ursula von der Leyen, related to the Counts of Faber-Castell and of course the Royal House of Leyen, of the von der Leyen family, who gave governors to slave states like Carolina, Virginia or Pennsylvania. As it might be clear now that the slave drivers were all of Pharaoh's nobility and not us, the white race, who are slaves ourselves in a still feudal system by these pharaohs. And if I scroll down here, look, here's their royal coat of arms here. Uh, there are three times the for the concept of three the uh, seal of Solomon, King Solomon, who was also was one of their pharaohs. They're all pharaohs. You got this bird standing on one leg, and there she is again when she was younger. Uh, look, here she's being driven around like the like Queen Elizabeth, you know being driven around, driven around in a in the carriage. Because they know where they come from. They know it. Here she was the defense minister together. Here she is in the US. Together with all the Skull and Boys, the Skull and Bones boys. Here in India, same thing. You can see she's an, an, an aristocrat. Oh, together with Henry Kissinger. Oh, nice. The war criminal murdered so many people in Vietnam. She censored, you know, she censored the, inter the internet in Germany or you know, all over Europe. Here she is with uh, Donald Trump. They're all the same bunch. Here she is with Putin. All bunch of pharaohs. So here it says House of Leon. The Haus von der Leyen is an ancient German noble family of princely and historically sovereign rank. As a former ruling and mediatized family, it belongs to the high nobility, the Hochadel. And they also have a nice castle here. Look, this is another coat of arms with two dogs this time. And here's seven, I don't know what, seven. The concept of three and four, it has a crown with a Templar symbol. Here's their castle, Schloss Gumdorf, belongs to the family. Well, there you go. They, they never stop ruling, these pharaohs. It's going on since 2000 years in, in Europe. So here it is in German. Leyen Adelsgeschlecht, das Haus von der Leyen. Hoch Adels. Here's their coat of arms. The number seven. Some sort of a ferocious dog. Freiherrn von der Leyen.
So here's another picture of their castle, or one of their castles, Schloss von der Leyen, the Lion Castle. It almost sounds like Lion, eh? Lion, Lion. So, of course, it comes from Lion. You know? Lyon, Lyon in French. The Lyon, the Chateau de Lyon. So here you can read in the article about uh, where she comes from. I'm not going to read it all for you. She comes from a family that had played a great role in the early colonization of the United States, giving governors to states like Carolina, Virginia, and, and that featured figures like James Ladson, Ladson uh, a slave driver. Here, let's have a look at the picture first. You know, you, the whole thing is in a circle for the compass, and here is, um, you know, there are four squares in it. And even this whole thing, it says square and compass, you know. And there are eight parts in it for octagon, and here are four lanes every time. So for the concept of four, and the circle is for the concept of three. And white, of course, for the New World Order, the horizontal rule. And blue, because they're waging a war against us. Yeah. So now, this is Ursula von der Leyen, the aristocrat. So now, she is the president of the European Commission, wanting to put Pharaoh's poison into your blood and orders you imprisoned at home with a filter on your face. And she is a descendant of the American slave owner, James Ladson. Sorry, my dear Nubians. We of the white race didn't do it. We are slaves ourselves of this nobility. So this is the American slave driver, James Ladson, having 200 slaves. And among Ladson's descendants is Ursula von der Leyen, who briefly lived under the alias Rose, Rose Ladson. So the former German defense minister and actual president of the European Commission is an aristocratic descendant of U.S. James Ladson, who had about 200 slaves. She is now the master and owner of all the European slaves and telling them to be locked inside, cover their faces with some sort of a coffee filter and take Pharaoh's poison in our veins and kidnap our children soon has already been done in Australia. So I, qu I quickly like to repeat this uh, for the Germans. So uh, James Henry Ladson um, ist ein uh, Sklaventreiber in der Sklavenhandel. Der hat ungefähr 200 schwarze Sklaven und unter seinen Nachkommen ist Ursula von der Leyen die 1978 unter dem Pseudonym Rose Ladson lebte. And here are some German slaves with their babies protesting against the internet censorship by the aristocrat Ursula von der Leyen, saying Zensursula as Zensur means censorship in German, fitting into the noble lady's name Ursula, altogether Zensursula, German Emperor Wilhelm II had six sons, who were all officers in paramilitary Nazi organizations like the SS and the SA in the hope to reinstall the monarchy 
and most of them were Nazis, and most joined the Stahlhelm, political, paramilitary, pro-monarchy organization. So, here, I'll show you, this is, this is the article here, you can all read it if you want. All these children, they're all in the, all these aristocrats. Yeah, here's a picture of the Emperor Wilhelm II with wife and children. And look carefully at the eyes of the children. Now they look like a bunch of aliens. As the children, because they're so young, they haven't learned yet how to hide it and how to conceal who they really are. Look at the eyes. This is not normal, people. The children don't know yet. They haven't learned yet how to lie and cheat and to conceal their real origins, where they come from. And it doesn't look human, people. And they don't act human, killing us by the millions. It has to stop, people. These pharaohs with the pyramids and, and all these things nobody can still do today and, and construct. They have to stop. And here's the Stahlhelm, that means the steel helmet, which was a military monarchist organization. It's like sort of a predecessor of the Bilderberger, if you want. Right? And the interesting thing is they even had a monarchist German National People's Party. Well, I mean, people and monarchists, it's not the same thing, eh? The German National People's Party. There they are. Very interesting. And there are monarchists. This is what the war was about. Two world wars. Just look into their children's eyes of this inhuman race and see their true nature. While the older ones all seduce us with their innocent smiles, concealing the true eyes by the technique of the hidden hand of Freemasonry. To all politicians and most of their worldwide blue army belong to this race. Just look at their Nazi police battalion 101 and what they did genociding all civilians in Eastern Europe during World War II. It says it's a police battalion 101, which we also find back in America, the 101 Rangers. It's, it's not a coincidence they're taking this number. Eh? And they became a major perpetrator of the Holocaust in occupied Poland. And now it's the turn for the whole of humanity for this Holocaust, especially the white race. Again, well, you can find it all yourself in Wikipedia. Well, the police Einsatzgruppen are back, people. You all buckle up now. Yeah, the Einsatzgruppen. They were the... Uh, they did the final solution and... Yeah, it's the SS Einsatzgruppen, together with the police, killing all these people, like soft targets, you know. The real Germans, they were in the army and the Wehrmacht fighting real armies. 
while Pharaoh's aristocracy, they were doing the soft targets with their police battalion 101, the Einsatzgruppen, you name it. And they're back, people. They're going to do it again to all of us. Here in the uh, Prince Bernhard of Lippe Bisterfeld in Wikipedia, I forgot to tell you, here Hitler gave an account of the conversation he had with Bernhard in his Tischgespräche, table conversations. So Hitler, he knew the Prince Bernhard, who later flew airplanes in the RAF. Well, how is this possible, eh? What's going on? And here the story about Unity Valkyrie Mitford from an aristocratic family, which you can see here, the Mitford, Mitford family. And she was a, uh, a fan of Adolf Hitler and who got probably suicided by, by the Nazis because there's a war within a war and the aristocracy are deep into it. Also, she knew Hitler personally, of course. Two world wars because of the nobility, and we had to die for them. Also, Hitler was, of course, pro-monarchy as he was financed out of Switzerland by Octogon of the Nazi Templars and Swiss General Ulrich Wille, himself out of the German high aristocracy von Bismarck from 1923 onwards. So in a Nazi speech from 1925, Hitler and the Nazis accepted aristocratic titles again because it was Pharaoh's nobility financing him. And here you can see Hitler together with the King Edward VIII of England. So this is an article from 1936 out of a Swiss newspaper, L'Information, and even the Americans, they had to draw their information out of Switzerland. And it says here, Hitler believes that a monarchy is the, and quote, this is what Hitler said, the best means of perpetuating the Nazi regime. So they had an alliance, you know, Chancellor for life, that's what he said, and guarantee the continued Nazi power. You know, he was together with all these, the, the, the entire European aristocracy with the Nazis. He had the King of Hanover, King George. It's all aristocratic, the whole world war. Right? And, um, you know, you think there is, uh, you know, two parties, royalists and republicans. So the old world's order and the new world's order, and that's it. But it's not like that. There is still a third party, and that's the union of both of them. And they won it all. You know, the order of the garter. The union of the old world's order and the new world's order. And the old world's order didn't want the union. The new world's order they wanted this union. Well, of course they want, they preferred a, a clean new world order, but I had to make this union. And this is what happened. Two world wars because of these aristocrats. All politicians in the world are pharaonic aristocrats. Like this 12 year old American girl finding that out. But her name, is French aristocratic with the noble prefix of de in front of her name. Bridgen de Avignon, d'Avignon, Bridgen d'Avignon. Of course, a 12 year old didn't find it all out by herself, 
that all US presidents can be tracked back to one British king in common. This was a political move by the French Old World Order, probably in Louisiana, and trying to wake us up against the satanic New World Order of the Swiss Nazi Templars. She also has a very noble looking YouTube channel. And I guess she has tried to help us against this evil. Just as the French King Philip the Fair did. It would be fair to presume that Brigitte d'Avignon got blacklisted for the rest of her life after she did that. So here's the rest of her channel. Hello, there she is. I always find beauty in things that are odd and imperfect. They are much more interesting. By Brigitte d'Avignon. Out of the union of Queen Emma of the Netherlands from the German Nazi house of Zuwaldeck und Piermont and King Wilhelm III of the Netherlands was born the Dutch Queen Wilhelm Minor in 1880. The great grandmother of today's King William of the House of Orange with his garter lace jarretier ribbon on his thigh in his Harry Potter cloak, because all the constitutional monarchies belong to the Order of the Garter. There are no more real monarchies today, as they all became New World Order, a vertical rule of the Knights Templars, obeying to Switzerland. So here from Wikipedia, here Order of the Garter, you see all the uh, the royal houses that belong to the Order of the Garter, because um, the Allies won the war. That's why, because of two world wars. So this is their victory. Here's their victory page, if you if you if you like, and the Garter banners in St George Chapel. Remember that the Knights Templars Chapel in uh, Pontarier in France with all the chairs to, towards uh, Christ, all the backs towards Christ in the temple. Well, it had St. George on top of it. You know, the Templars are very much into James, into uh, St. George. So you see the Duke of Cambridge, all the Dukes, the Princess Alexandra, the Queen. The Earl of Wessex, it's all Oniswaki Malipans. There he is, the King of the Netherlands. Oh, he just popped out. Hello. Now, now the King of Spain here, the King of Norway, the King of Sweden, the Queen of Denmark. They all lost the war. And we had to die for them, eh? The Princess Beatrice married to the SS prince who finally flew a spitfire. Crazy stuff, eh? The king of Spain, the emperor of Japan. Oh, there he is. And the rest, well, I'll read it yourself. Oh, look at the, uh, the crescent moon, Muslim stuff. Well, it's all the same stuff, eh? All the uh, the emirates, all the the emirs and caliphs. They, you know, it's the same pharaonic nobility, eh? Here, the coat of arms of current knights and ladies of the garter. Uh, now the queen, Oniswaki Malipans. Look everywhere. It says in the middle here. There's the uh, the garter. You know, the ribbon around their thighs. It says Oniswaki uh, Malipals um, and all the coat of arms. Of course, the Prince of Wales has it, you know, and Lady Ockelvy, the arms of Juan Carlos, the King of Spain, he has it. 
the king of Sweden has it. They all have the uh, the garter, the jarretière around their thighs. Oh, what a great party, eh? Norway with an axe, chopping our heads off. The emperor of Japan, it's the same thing. You know, it's not English. It has nothing to do with the English people. It's the worldwide per a pharaoh of the entire world. The, uh, the, the princess Beatrice of the Netherlands and well, they all they all have it, eh? This is this is the new world order, and it it is global. So people who talk about globalist, you know, like you know, globalist, globalist. Well, these are the globalists. You see, this is global. I could analyze all the coat of arms for you, but oh, that will take too much time, you know. Yeah, look, there's the Olympic Games in it. Olymp they, they are masters. They got the gold medal in the Olympic Games of lying. Eh? I can tell you that. They won the Olympic Games of lies. It's all they can do. And here, the Nazi Templar Castle of Schaumberg, of the noble house of Zuwaldeck und Piermont, with a Freemason New World Order checkerboard, checkerboard configuration in the courtyard of the castle. So this is the castle who got of the very powerful family, um, Zuwaldeck und Piermont, who had this SS general, the butcher of um, Buchenwald, and murdering the normal German people of the SA Sturmabteilung, nationalists, who just wanted to have peace and enough food for their kids. He helped murdering them all. And this was his castle, you know. And he, this family got married into the House of Orange. You know, and, and giving birth now to to the the King of Orange uh, with his garter lace and everything. Uh, very powerful people. Well, there you go, Schaumburg Castle in Wikipedia of the family Valdeck and Piermont. Here is the SS Prince Josias. Uh, belong to him. And uh, it's it's in the in the Rhineland Palatinate from the Palatines. Now you remember what I told you? Who was from the Palatines? Whose ancestry? Well, Obama. It's next to Switzerland. You know, it's on the Rhine. You just have to take a boat from Basel, and you, and you get in the Palatines. And also Donald Trump from his father's side. From his mother's side, he is. Uh, of Scottish and um, Nordic uh, royals related to the house of uh, to the Queen of Denmark and to the King of Norway. I already made a film about that. So since we're at it, I'll show you the um, this video here. Here it is, the title, also on YouTube. And this is one of the several videos I did on Trump's uh, royal ancestry and showing his uh, genealogical uh, bloodline ties. And look, he's throwing the same Masonic hand signs as Mr. Hitler himself. It's all the same bunch. It's very complicated and not very easy to understand people because in the internal pharaonic wars of their nobility, there are not just the two obvious parties, of royalists and republicans or old world order vertical rule versus new world order horizontal rule but there is also a third power who won it all the third aristocratic power is the union of both republicans and royalists into the constitutional monarchies and as neither the old world or the royalists nor the new world or the republicans wanted this union, 
they decided to make an old world order, a new world order, alliance between the old world order royalists in Germany and the new world order Swiss Templar Republicans in order to avoid this union of the United Kingdoms. The old world order royals in Germany wanted their monarchy and no union and the Swiss New World Order Republican Templars wanted to keep their system and no union either. So basically the enemies became forced to be friends in order to keep each one their own system in place and avoiding the UK union of both. And in this terrible internal war of our masters, there was lots of betrayal and flipping sides, like Prince Bernhard, one day being in the SS, chatting with Hitler and killing nationalist Germans, and the next day he was flying a Spitfire in the RAF 322 Skull and Bones Squadron, or like Hitler himself one day pretending to be for the German people and their original German nationalist workers, and the next day he was for the monarchy, killing all the real German nationalists. And in the end, every military decision Hitler took was in favour of the Allies, as his Dunkirk decision, or at Stalingrad. So. Who was he really, this Hitler? Was he a spy for the Order of the Garter Union and therefore making Germany lose the war with his incredible, unlogical, strategical decisions? Well, Hitler definitely was against the German people, with one million non jaywalker Germans murdered in the concentration camps and deliberately bringing total havoc over Germany. In fact, Hitler and his Nazis were all Freemasons, giving Freemason hand signs all over, with their square and compass swastika, the SS for the goddess Isis, and skull and bones Totenkopfverbande. And when I found this in a video, Hitler doing the, the same as all the, the Freemason hand sign as all the, the other politicians, I made a, a video about it about 10 years ago. And um, I had many more other Nazis like uh, Goering uh, doing the hidden hand. Um, but Foktube took it off because, uh, well, Apparently, Google are friends with the Nazis. They also deleted my film. They censored my videos like Auschwitz made in Switzerland and Switzerland financed the Shoah. So they're definitely, Google are definitely friends with the Nazis. Eh? And in the end, Hitler betrayed the German monarchists after they had helped him into power. I mean, look at what happened. After two world wars, there were no more real monarchies. World War I ended the German monarchy in 1918. The Turkish monarchy of the Caliphate in 1923. And the rest of the monarchies. And after World War II, it was the end of the Japanese monarchy, forced to become a member of the Order of the Garter and accept its union, and many more monarchies disappeared after World War II. Then, after the war, the Order of the Garter just created a whole bunch of constitutional union kings out of nowhere, as in Spain in 1978, after half a century without any Spanish king at all, or in Iran, in 1941, as can seen here, even before the end of World War II, 
creating the Shah, Mohammed Reza, with an octagon star of the Order of the Garter, probably. Or like in Saudi Arabia, creating the king in 1932. All puppets of the British royals, as Gaddafi had put it. Of course, in reality, all these created Union kings are all puppets of the Order of the Garter, a worldwide phenomenon. This is why in the United Kingdoms you have the House of Lords, which is a royal house of descendants of the Old World Order, vertical rule, and the House of Commons by the horizontal rule, Republican Templars, who are also aristocrats. But as they don't belong to the primogeniture, or the last ones of course, they are almost considered commoners by the lords. But as they're not entirely commoners, they are called commons. So the masters have three options. New world order, old world order, and the union of both, which therefore also is the concept of three, which is them. And if you add the slaves and fourth force to that, you get the concept of four, meaning us. So this here, in fact, is the principle of the order of the garter in practice. So here you see the lion with the crown on its head and where it says Dieu, God, because it's the divine right of the nobility, of the kings. And on this side is the, um, the unicorn, the Templar's horse, the new Templar's horse with the, uh, the phallic symbol on its head and where it says Mon Droit. And look, they both have the same crest. In red, of course, for the House of Lords. As I told you, that red is them, our masters of the Red House, Per Tasser, of Pharaoh. And still white in it being the gate behind which the monarchists are trapped by the Knights Templars in white. Uh, when they show it the other way around, with a red Old World Order gate holding the white Templars in, that has to do with their internal war, which you can see here. You see, here's the other way around. Here it has a red gate and a white underground. And the crest has loads of squares and circles for square and compass. You see, there are a lot of squares in it here. And here's also here, and here's the circle, and here also a lot of circles. So it definitely says square and compass. Uh, here you can see the House of Commons of the United Kingdoms. And here is the logo with a, with a green gate. And here it has a yellow gate on green, and it all has a meaning. But usually this should be a white gate, and this yellow should be white as well. You can see that. Here's green on white, but it should be uh, white on green. The same one here should be the other way around, which I will show you now. The House of Commons has the same white New World Order Templar prison gate to keep those in as low as the grass, also considered as criminals. And that's why the Auschwitz death logo for the inversed pyramid of death was green for the criminals. Thus, for all the vaccinated Israelis today, where the jaywalkers in Israel need to wear the Green Pass badge 
for those who have Pharaoh's poison in their veins. Because green in Auschwitz was the color for the professional criminals. And the people are being seen by Pharaoh as low grass criminals by our masters and part of the satanic inverse speech. As in fact, our pharaonic masters are the real criminals and not we, the people. Now, the Union United Kingdoms have a new parliament logo in blue for their war against us. Pharaoh's blue war crown. It seems that the new parliament logo in blue for the new war against their slaves got inaugurated in 2019, right in time for their new global bug war against their slaves. So here you can see that again, the Parliament of the United Kingdom. And this is their new logo here. They call it the Parliament of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And it gives the impression you know that the, the the thing that is united is like Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England, but no, <laughs> I can assure you it's not at all that. It's the union of the old world's order and the new world's order. They don't care at all about us or about Northern Ireland or Scotland. You know, they only put them in it. You know. So here you can see it, a lot of squares, a lot of circles for the square and compass. And they changed this here. Before they were circles, and now they put like, you know, like this in it. And of course, the Templar's cross, and then the Fleur de Lis, and now the Templar's cross, you know, for the, uh, the United Kingdoms. And the new logo of the UK Parliament of our masters. These uh, masters, they call it the portcullis, a French word by the nobility, of course, meaning a medieval fall gate to keep the people out or to keep us in maybe, like locked inside or the current return of the new concentration camps to force Pharaoh's poison into your veins. Here it says, portcullis from the old French portcullis. Well, I never heard the name. I never heard the word. Here you can see it. It's the same as the UK Parliament. You know, it looks like a, gu a guillotine, a guillotine. You know, if you're not quick enough, it chops your head off. It's the same with the traffic lights. Red, for the old world's order, means stop. We, the nobility of the Red House, Per Tasser, order you. And for us, Pharaoh's slaves, the concept of four, square, and base of the pyramid, where the green grass used to grow. And when the light turns green, okay, you slaves. You're set free. Go into the green grass, you sheeple, and eat that green stuff. All of this is part of the hidden hand of Freemasonry. Pharaoh's internal war between the Old World Order, New World Order, and the Union World Order, leading to two world wars with millions dead in which also my grandfather died in 1942, being an officer in the British Naval Intelligence, and now me setting things straight for the tragic loss of Grandpa dying for nothing. Therefore, in nobility's internal war, the New World Order and Union World Order Freemasons started to murder the old world order monarchists who were still left. Like Empress Sissi, just before World War I, murdered in Switzerland, 
in 1898 by an Italian anarchist under Freemason control, who was living in Switzerland. Or the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, killed by the Black Hand, the Hidden Black Hand Freemason organization in 1914, and many others leading to two world wars and many other monarchs and monarchists were mur murdered in this era, of whom we've never heard of. So an archduke, that means he's going to be the emperor of a very, very big and powerful monarchy of uh, Austria. And here you can see their logo. There we go. And you can see a Templar's cross here, the skull and bones. Here again, the skull of death. So that's typical Freemasonry. And the black hand. Um, it's the hidden hand of Freemasonry. So it's very, very clear. It's the same, the ones who had Empress Sissy murdered. The anarchists were under control of Freemasons, and the the head center, which I explained in that film, is in uh, Switzerland. The New World Order Templars murdered the Old World Order monarchists in their internal war, and consequently, millions of Europeans pushed by the nobility into these terrible wars in which the people got annihilated, believing all these pharaonic lies and arguments for global war, just as today's sort of global war and the lies, you know, to push us into that. The internal nobility war was also the reason for the Nazi deputy Führer Rudolf Hess to fly to Scotland in 1941 to see the Duke of Hamilton in order to warn the British nobility against Hitler's coming betrayal against the monarchists. As Hitler was a New World Order Freemason and Swiss Nazi Templar agent lying to everyone, deliberately betraying the German people and the German monarchists. Hess was born in Egypt, land of Pharaoh, and he had hoped to find real monarchic aristocracy in England in his mission for the German monarchy in order to unite English and German monarchists. Only problem, in the United Kingdoms, there are no more real monarchists, as they all belong to the Unionists of the Order of the Garter. The Union of the New World Order, horizontally, and the Old World Order, vertically. And all of this is part of Pharaoh's internal war with Pharaoh's nobility leading us all to the slaughterhouse in two world wars, with their dumb slaves, the sheeple, believing every lie the masters chew out for them through the king's media liars. Uh, this is Wikipedia about Rudolf Hess. Well, he doesn't look very German, he looks very Turkish. Well, that was born. That that was because he was born in the in the Ottoman um, Caliphate, the Ottoman Empire. Here, look, Hess was born in Alexandria in Egypt. Here, yeah, in Egypt, a part of the Ottoman Empire, but under a, a British occupation. And it goes on here. Yeah. The protectorate of Sir Evelyn Baring. Oh, look, he also, he's all, almost slipping his hand inside there. Eh? 
and he went and studied in Neuchâtel in Switzerland. There, next to where Ian Fleming was in Lausanne. They they all knew each other, people. And um, so, Hess Hess youth in Egypt, you know. Um, he had a lifelong contempt for non-white peoples, together with a strong admiration for the British Empire. You know, that, that's why he did the flight and hoping to find some British monarchists. So Rudolf Hess thought he had to do with the British monarchists when he flew to Scotland through contacting the Duke of Hamilton, not knowing that there are no more real monarchists in England, who therefore all belong to the Order of the Garter, the Union of Monarchists and Templars of the United World Order. The whole thing is interesting to read. It's also about his flight. Well, you can look at it yourself. And that was Hesse's fatal mistake. Hitler, of course, was fully aware of the United World Order and the union of New World Order Templar Republicans and Old World Order Monarchists, as he got fully initiated in Switzerland in 1923 at the Freemason Lodge of Zurich during his visit to Switzerland. So here you see the, the Duke of Hamilton, and you can read the, um, well, I mean, they all knew about why Hess actually, why he, why he flew to, uh, to Scotland and to see Hamilton. They all knew it, but of course, they're not going to tell their slaves. Yeah, the Second World War, the Hess affair. Very interesting, but the, well, they're not going to tell you what it was really about. I mean, they all knew it. I mean, if I can, if I know this all, I mean, you know that they knew it all, right? Yeah, look, there it is. So that's the big mistake has made, eh? Look, scroll it all down. Here, he was a member of the House of Commons. I just showed you that before. There they are. The, as you can see here, this guy is an aristocrat, a duke. So the House of Commons, they are pharaohs and aristocrats themselves. You all see the uh, the green cloth on the table you know, and the green floor. Because that's us, you know, the grass down at the pyramid. Right? And um, oh, here it is. He was part of, the, he was appointed to the Order of the Thistle. And the Order of the Thistle, that's the Scottish equivalent of the uh, the order of the garter here look if i'm gonna punch on it uh it doesn't say here yet look there we go and uh, their, their motto is nemo me impune la chesit that means no one provokes me with impunity hey mr rudolf hess oh that's what happened to you hey look um I'll show it to you. It's all the same thing. And, and Hess, did, he, he was not aware of this. Oh, here it is. It's the equivalent in England. Uh, it's equivalent in England, the most noble order of the garter. There you go. And they all belong to it. So this is the third party. And Hess, he wasn't aware of this. He only thought there was the, uh, the, uh, the Templar New World Order and the Old World Order monarchists. Uh, he didn't understand this. So this is very interesting. Well, you can all read it yourself. And here is your thistle, like the order of the thistle, which is like the Scottish uh, order of the garter to which um, the Duke of Hamilton belonged to. And this thistle here, the Knights Templars, they call it Cardabel, and uh, probably because it looks like the sun, Amun-Ra, yeah. And you see it's a thistle, and it grows in the south of France, so the order of the thistle has nothing to do with Scotland or England. 
and says n n n nothing of our rulers have to do anything with Europe. I mean, they're, they're not from here. And uh, this was in the, the Templars town of La Couvertoirade, which I filmed for you in this video. So you can see it here at 43 minutes, but uh, you should watch the whole film. It's more than one hour. And it, I, I, uh, you were lucky it was not on my, my old channel, Gure, because then it would have been gone. And here's the title, and it's on my channel here, like today. I'm using today. So this is the origins of the Order of the Thistle. Okay. And I wonder if all of this, apparently, uh, Rudolf has, he was not really aware of all of this. There you go. There's the Order of the Thistle by the Knights Templars in La Couvertoirade in the south of France. Here, Mr. Hess, you shouldn't have listened so much to Mr. Hitler, but you should have looked to the list of knights and ladies of the garter in Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. Uh, look at yourself. Read all the names. Maybe you recognize your neighbor. Well, this is a long time ago, so let's, you know, scroll forwards because it's going to take ages. Uh, this is the night, the time of the Knights Templars here. And when it was uh, all that coat of arms, you know. Oh, and here, look at this. The Earl of Buckingham. I recently saw this um, uh, video, like in the evening, you know, to relax. And um, the um, the thing, Lara Croft, uh, two parts of it, one with Angelina Jolie and the other one with another one. And it talks about, uh, she is the, the daughter of the Earl of Buckingham, right? Eh? It's all related to the Order of the Garter. That's why they made that video, Lara Croft. So, well, let's not do it too quick then because it's interesting. Devereux, Devro. They use that name a lot in videos. It's always a, some secret spy of Devro. I don't know where I, in which, which video I saw it, you know. Somerset, you know. There's Seth in it and Sumeria. Seth, the, the Lord of Darkness of the of Pharaoh. Lavash, it means the cow in English. Now, why does it show three lions? Eh? His name is a cow. Well, here the Prince of Wales. Oh, this is going to take ages. Eh? Beaufort, it means strong and uh, beautiful and strong. Beaufort. Already the King of Portugal, of course, you know them. I mean, the Templar fleet went to Portugal, like uh, Templar castles of, uh, uh, I forgot the name, already in the uh, in 1400. And the Templars were just burned, you know, and persecuted in France uh, not only 100 years ago. And he's already on the, uh, the King of Portugal in the Order of the Garter. There's also a list of the Order of the Thistle, but I mean, I'll let you look at it yourself. Eh? Hmm. Talbo, like the French car. There was a French car, like in the 80s, Talbo. It didn't last very long because, you know, it already fell apart if you looked at it. So the Baron wasn't too pleased with the car, you might say. Uh, Robessard, very French. It's all French anyway, you know, like Stafford, all, all, even those names, it's all French, you know. The Duke of Burgundy, yeah. Well, the, um, 
Burgundy was all, always together with the, uh, with, the, with the English, you know, that's why we have the, uh, the Joan of Arc story. Uh, so it's just quite clear that the, uh, the Duke of Burgundy is in the Order of the Garter. Yeah? So, you know, Rudolf Hess, why didn't you know this? Eh? Or maybe you did know. Yeah, the Duke of Austria conspiring against the Emperor of Austria, of course. You know, well, he looks like a, a guy doing into conspiracies. Right? Avranche in France with the Spanish name. Uh, Brunswick, that's in Germany. Sounds English, but are there also in England? Bourchier, French. Frederick the Third, oh, and the uh, the great King Frederick, Frederick the Great. He was an example of Mr. Hitler. He took his painting everywhere. But that's the Frederick coming after that one here. It was a bit later. Jasper Tudor, Bonville, very French. It's all very French. Plantagenet, it's all French. This is uh, out of this house is the king to which all American presidents are related to, as um, Bridge and Davignon showed us. Right? Merci beaucoup, uh, chère princesse. Baron Herb Herbert, Earl of Douglas. Right? It's Doug the the um, uh, the Duke of Douglas Hamilton, right? Duke of Burgundy, Wiltshire, Mal Travers, Travers it meaning passing through, and Mal it means no good, so it was not good passing through, probably not good passing through France for them. The Duke of Urbino, Northumberland, Dorset, Seth again, you know, Seth, the Aragon, Aragon and Castile. Oh, the king, King Ferdinand, the Duke of Modena in Italy. You know, it's a worldwide conspiracy against the nobility. You know? And it all started right after the French nobility, the real French king. He uh, decimated the Templars, but only by, you know, like 325 who got arrested and tens of thousands, they made it to Switzerland. And uh, the Earl of Oxford, and then it took a couple of years, and they were in England, you know, like uh, founding the Order of the Garter. Baron Strange, oh, here, here, how strange you are, I'd say. Prince of Wales, Devon, Calabria. Oh, look, the King of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. This is Mr. Trump's. Ancestry, I showed you that in the film. It's all so Trump is very 100% sure he's in the order of the garter. Didn't you see the, uh, you know, the uh, the garter around his leg, you know? Well, this is what his wife probably saw, and that's why at a certain moment they're having they were having internal problems with the, with each other. So. Hello, darling. Uh, how much? What? What is that on your um, on your upper thigh? Because he's uh, she's a foreigner, eh? From uh, what is it? Czechoslovakia. Stafford, Portugal, King of Portugal. You know the the nobility had no chance at all. Uh, the Medici. Oh. The Archduke of Austria. Ferdinand, not to be uh, conferred with the uh, a Viscount, with the one who got killed in 1914. Oh, here, yeah, the King of France. How is that possible? Of course, that's afterwards. You know. Afterwards, it was, um, you know, the Templars, they, uh, they were in it. King of Scotland, 
Or sometimes they had to pretend to be part of the order of the guards to prevent a war, build up your army in the meantime, and then strike back, and then uh, throw the guards in the uh, in the garbage can for a while. Right? It's all about you know a lot of betrayal. Another king of France, probably pretending. But I mean, the real king of France, the real king fighting all this, that was uh, Philip the Fair. Well, it's, it's, it's an endless list. I could make just one video, war wick, I mean, wicked and war. Yeah, wars are wicked. Eh? Uh, Bedford, Bedford, four, like from four, meaning strong in English. And the guy is strong in bed, eh? How many sons did he have? Worcester? Harry Ford? Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, there's another story. Yeah. Another king of Denmark and Norway. Hey, Mr. Trump. Oh, you know that. Oh. Screwberry. The Earl of Screwberry. Oh, they really screwed us big, big time, eh? Oh, the Duke of Württemberg. That's in southern Germany, where they uh, they have a Swiss dialect called Alemannisch. Earl of S Henry Lee. Hmm. Some more barons, Bolton. Another king of you know, all the kings of Norway. They were they were early in it, eh? Uh, Montgomery. Hey, you remember the general? Well, it's all the same lineage. Maurice de Nassau, the Prince of Orange, yeah? later Prince of Orange, the House of Orange. Of course, they, they married into the, uh, the, the British, uh, well, they, they, they took over the, uh, the, 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 the British uh, monarchy, you know. Yeah, the uh, the Viscount of Villiers, like the uh, the French politician Philippe de Villiers. Oh, here the, here we are, James Hamilton, Marcus of Hamilton. Already, so he has an ancestor in the Order of the Garter. Yeah. Hey, Mister Rudolf Hess. Centuries ago, the family of Hamilton they were in the Order of the Garter. Hey, better. Better should have flown somewhere else, maybe America. Right? King of Sweden, Prince of Orange. So here it says, you know, the order of the garter around it every time. Oh, this is endless. What's this? Electro Palatine? What the Palatines, eh? That's again. Morton, mort, it means death in French. Of the Rhine, Rupert, the Prince of the Rhine, Orange again, House of Orange, Buckingham, Lara Croft is there again, Mont Rose, it means the Mountain of the Rose, William the Third, House of Orange. Oh, yeah, I think that guy he married into the House of um, uh, the, the, of the, uh, the German SS Prince. Uh, Comte de Granville, Oxford, Denmark, Sweden, Saxony, Lauderdale, Bedford, Mulgrave, Richmond, it's from Rich Amon, a rich mountain, you know, had a castle on the mountain, very rich. Uh, Ormond. Mond, it means the world, and Or, it means gold, the world of gold. You know, it all belongs to them, eh? Screwberry. Hanover. Oh, the house of Hanover. Queensbury. Good old Finn. <laughs> good old, good old Finn, eh? Oh. Duke of Argyll. Argyle, 
the Argallian Sutherland Highlanders. Eh? Duke of Hamilton, there he is again. Look at that. Hey, Rudolf Hess, come on here. Go, go look at my video. The Earl of Poulet, it means a chicken. And the French chicken, you know, that uh, the chicken or the rooster is the, uh, the national symbol of France. And it represents, of course, um, the falcon of Horus. And here's the Earl of Poulet. Halifax, Lune, Lüneburg in Germany. You see, Brunswick, Lüneburg. It's in, it's in Germany. Duke of Saint Albans. There's the Saint Albans in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, Beauclair. Uh, that's his name. Beauclair. They write here Beauclair like this, but it means um, uh, beautiful and clear or fair like uh, Philip the Fair, but it's written in that you know, over the times you've got a different way of writing, right? Sunderland, Lincoln, the Earl of Lincoln, well, President Lincoln, right? Roxburgh, Townsend, Walpole, Burlington, Arlington, uh, Hesse Castle, I think they were deep into Nazism, the Royal House of Hesse. Yes, yes, they were. Oh, look, uh, the house, the Duke of Saxe, Gotha, uh, Altenburg. Hmm. And there were also the Margrave of Brandenburg, Ansbach, the Duke of Leeds. Cardigan, Devonshire. Second Earl Temple, Gr Granville Temple. I don't know what, what temple, eh? What Templars, eh? Prince of Wales, why is it in yellow? Oh, this is taking ages, eh? Sorry for this, people, but it is, it is important. Are there all Germans here? I became, yeah. The German princes that became that became the, the the Duke of Cambridge. Later, you know, the Duke of Sussex, Prince Augustus Frederick. All these Germans, they became Duke of Kent and Duke of Cumberland. Oh man, Hess Castle again. The Marquess of Buckingham, eh? Laura, Lara Croft, La Ra, Amun Ra, eh? Croft, like craft, you know, witchcraft, the, cro the Croft of Ra, so to speak. And another German, oh yeah, oh, the, the yellow ones are probably, they were French, and the, um, here the, uh, the pink ones or whatever, orange. Uh, they were originally Germans and becoming uh, English, yeah. Lonsdale, Lonsdale, <laughs> like the Nazi t-shirts, <laughs> well it's all by them, eh? the Nazis are the Nazi Templars, so you know, the uh, house of the Royal, uh, the Order of the Garter, it's uh, the union with the Templars, so that's why Lonsdale, eh? it all belongs to our masters, you know, and they just, you know, they, um, they try people to fight each other, you know, the Lonsdale t-shirt guys against the other ones. And oh yeah, so in other colors, it's another nation here, King of France, the, uh, the Emperor of Russia, Nicholas the first, well, of course, you know, because, uh, how was that again? Yeah, he was a, uh, he's related to King Victoria. Nicholas II, he was the grandson of Queen Victoria. So he was uh, married with a daughter of Queen Victoria, probably. Sachs Meiningen, King of Württemberg.
Hamilton again. There you are, Alexander Hamilton with a horse. And afterwards, they changed the horse with a with an airplane. Prussia, Saxony, Chandor, uh, King Louis Philippe. Ah, Louis Philippe. He was the guy who. Um, the uh, French Foreign Legion was founded uh, when he was ruling over France, but he was not a real king anymore. He was there was already a, cons a constitutional monarchy. That's why he's here in the Order of the Guards. Eh? And um, the f he lived for about 20 years in Switzerland or even more. And the first uh, commander, he was uh, there was Colonel von Stoffel, the first commander of the, uh, the French Foreign Legion. He was Swiss. Because the Swiss, you know, they were the, the, the mercenaries under Knights Templars. And that's where it all comes from. It all comes back to the base. It's all being related back to the base of it all. Right? Fitzwilliam, London Derry. Right? You Irish, you think you, you rule over your own, you know, you just lose your energy over Protestantism against Catholics, against the Catholics, you know, just a loss of energy. Look, even the Turk, the Ottoman Empire, he's in the um, in the order of the Garter. So all your Muslims, you're all being betrayed. You know, this was the uh, the Caliphate. So you know, the Emirate now in um, in Afghanistan. You know, be aware. You know, don't call yourself an Emirate because it's from an Emir. It's from these sort of guys, and they're all in the order of this of the Garter. They're all Templars and and Pharaohs. You know. And this was a, um, a caliphate, Abdul Majid number one, in the order of the Gata. Hey, you Turks listening to me, look at this. Hey? Don't look down now and stop talking about jaywalkers all the time. It's just a, it's a waste of time. It's not a jaywalker, your, your caliph. Hey? It's the shaitan, king of Portugal, Wales, Harabi, Newcastle, Prussia. Yeah, Newcastle, that's uh, Chinese. It means um, a castle and a new one. <laughs> oh, I can translate all these names, eh? Look at that. Mecklenburg. Oh, it gets so boring, you know, I have to make some jokes, eh? Oh, look, the Earl of Spencer, Lady Diana. There you go. Order of the Garter. So Lady Diana, she was in the Order of the Garter. There's no doubt, right? No doubt at all. Look, this look almost looks like Crowley. Well, he's related to it, eh? Alistair Crowley. And again, Alistair Crowley, he had his uh, Boneskine house, Bolskine house, sorry. I knew there was something wrong. Um, right at the um, Royal Degree, Grey State, right? Like the video and the guy and the, the complete family they murdered. Yeah, so we had the Bolskine house, which burned down at exactly the same day at the um, the winter solstice, uh, December 21st, 2015, when I had to leave Switzerland. I never went back. And uh, and since the time, you know, he um, he and he went there, live. He, he had the, his villa, the Bolskine house, at the lake of Loch Ness. Do I say this right? You Scottish Loch Ness, eh? And uh, since the moment he was there, people started to see a monster in the lake. Because uh, apparently um, there is a tunnel and a gate to hell in that house, and which burned down at the same day when I left Switzerland. And even the fire department they couldn't um, they couldn't extinguish the fire. You know, King of England, Prussia, of um, Greece. Uh, see, Hellenus. It's uh, Hellas. It means Greece.
Bedford, Russia, Norway, Spain, Saxony, Netherlands, here again, the House of Orange, uh, deep into it, very deep. Wales, Argyle, you know, it's, it's, it, it's been written Argyll, but you say Argyle. Ah, right here, Battenberg, it's very German. Berg means a mountain, like the Bilderbergs, right? And um, Mount Mount Battenberg, yeah. And the uh, one of the uh, one of them was killed by the IRA. Uh, London, Derry, Württemberg, Naples, you know, the mafia. Mafia is also it's completely royal. It's aristocratic against the people of Italy, doing, you know, um, dealing in prostitutes and stealing our money, killing people, drugs, poisoning our youth with drugs, you know, the mafia. It's like in, like in Russia, Vorizagonia in Russia. They have an octagon symbol. Well, you know, right? Portugal, Denmark. Uh, well, it looks like his, his hat, like the Argyll in Sutherland Highlanders. Eh? Duke of Portland, Roberts. Mm, Frederick. I guess this is Frederick the Great, eh? this one. Germany. I knew he was a Freemason, Frederick the Great. Napoleon, that's why Napoleon went to visit him as well. I showed you once that video with the uh, with the German coin with a uh, swastika on it. Somebody stole it off me. Maybe the Swiss police, it's not there anymore. Spain, Russia, Austria, Aosta in Italy, Portugal. Uh, oh, look, Persia. Order of the Garter. That's why they uh, they just installed, you know, the British Empire. They just all the, installed uh, Shah Reza in uh, in Iran, and the Iranians didn't like it very much. They said, "Go away, go back to England." Hey, fuck off! And that's what happened. They saw it right, you know. But again, uh, the same ones ruling still over Iran again, you know, just. Put on another jacket, like an Islamic jacket, like you know, but they are the same ones. Emperor of Japan, Sweden, Württemberg, Baden, the Duke of Richmond, the Rich Mountain, Norway. They're all into it. Portugal, Queen Mary, uh, Earl of Minto, what's that? The Governor General of Canada, you know. It's all what they became, you know, all these dukes ruling over Canada and Japan, the Emperor of Japan, Earl of Spencer again, Charles Spencer, was that probably the grandfather of Lady Di, Earl de Beauchamp, the King of the Belgians, Kitchener, oh, there he is, the Butcher of... Uh, 28,000 defenseless white Christian children in British-made concentration camps. The Butcher Kitchener, Lord Kitchener, with Lord Winston Churchill, his pal, another butcher, and a liar. We're all liars. They're terribly good at lying. Oh, Arthur Balfour, the Balfour Declaration, King of Romania. Also, Oxford and Esquith. Uh, Lonsdale again. You know, Skinheads again. King of the Belgians, Yarbrough. Clarendon et Georges Villiers. Ah, oh, he became the, general, the Governor General of South Africa. That's why I heard the name somewhere. That's also how South Africa got, got betrayed, eh? It's all there, you know, by secret lodges like Order of the Garter and uh, sneaking the uh, the royalists, taking over South Africa, you know, just sneaking in there. Yeah. 
Another one in his first World War uniform, sending the people in to, to, to die. Well, he didn't die, you know, he lived until 1937. Well, what is it? 1944? They don't die, they never die. Yugoslavia, look, they were the Prince of Yugoslavia, Romania, Greece, Zetland, where is that? Oh, there you see, there she is, Wilhelmina, the Queen of the Netherlands, and she was born into that house um, of the SS Prince, oh, the name slipped away, I'm sorry, uh, Valdek Piemont, the house of Valdek Piemont. And uh, her mother was a uh, Valdek Piemont, a princess of Valdek Piemont. Remember? Oh, there he is, Mountbatten. Yeah, he got killed by the uh, by the IRA or uh, yes, uh, a descendant of him, Hungerford. Montgomery. Oh, look at that, General Montgomery. He's the first Viscount. Another aristocrat, well, of course he is, didn't you know? Like in France at the same time, there was a General Leclerc, Leclerc d'Haute Clock. They all are, they all are aristocrats. Maybe that's why Patton didn't like him. He was, he was talking like this. Oh, hello, General Patton, do you like a tea? Well, cat lost, mate. <laughs> No, I don't drink tea. Give me a coffee. Uh, uh, the Queen, Philip, you know, all order of the garter. Well, you knew that. Scarborough, Fortescue, Denmark. Oh, there he is. The other butcher, Winston Churchill. Sir, son of a Duke of... Uh, the uh, Palace of Blenheim. He was born in a castle. It doesn't say he's from a duke, eh? Because he was the uh, the, the prime minister, or what was he? So, uh, you know, they have to hide it a little bit. Oh, the emperor of Ethiopia. Oh, even him. Sir Anthony Eden. Later he became the Earl of Avon. Avon, Avon. King of Sweden, Rupert Guinness, ah, the Queen Juliana, so, and of the House of Valdek, Charles, of course, King of Norway, Belgians, Greece, another Templar, Gerald Templar, uh, like um, the uh, the TV series, the uh, the saint, you know, Simon Templar. That's why they call it Simon Templar. Okay. Uh, Roger Moore, he lived like an aristocrat in the motherland of all evil. Cobham, a viscount. Uh, Barony, it means a, uh, a baron, you know, baroness. Rhodes, uh -huh. more. I oh, yeah, he got more, like Roger Moore. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, some more dukes, barons, Denmark. Ah, look, Sweden. 19. Ah, oh, he's his dad. Oh, that was a funny bloke as well. He couldn't even write his own name, I heard. Uh, completely Ill illiterate. Duke of Kent. King of Spain. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's the former one. Another Queen of Orange. Baron. Ridley. Ridley Scott. Another princess. Uh, we've done it now. Oh, you've got Ma Maggie, Margaret Thatcher. Of course, she's in the order of the garter. They're all aristocrats. You don't become the prime minister of England if you're not in the order of the garter. It's as simple as that. Eh? 
the uh, Emperor of Japan, another Baron. I should read this as well, but that will take too long. Eh? Norway, Ogilvy, more Barons. Yeah, look at the Harry Potter parties here. Yeah. Duke of York and West Wales, Wessex, Maltravers. The defense, I should have, you know, former director of MI5, a baroness. <laughs> Too bad I haven't looked at the right signs. I'm sorry about that. You can look at it again yourself and make a video about it. Uh, Lord Lieutenant, a Lord Lieutenant of Greater London and the Lord Mayor of London, Sir David Brewer. King of Spain. Uh, there he is in his Tsar, the Tsar, Zarzuela Castle. A Lord Lieutenant of Hampshire. What, the, what is that? Lady. It doesn't look like a lady very much. It looks a bit like that uh, English uh, comedian. Uh, you got King of the Netherlands, Order of the Garter, Mary Peters, the Lord Lieutenant of Belfast, and uh, Gascoigne, here yeah, all the coat of arms, the Templars crosses in it, the ships of the Knights Templars, the checkerboards of the Freemasons and other Templars cross here. More, this is like the um, like they have in the order of the um, and here too. Uh, I forgot the name of it. The um, to close the gate, you know, what's in the the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Uh, the crescent moon of the Muslims, because they they were all together. Yeah. Nazi stuff here, crescent moon, the grail, our blood is here, the Olympic Games. Wow. Remember what I filmed for you here on the Royal Astrid Hotel, behind the King's summer residence in Belgium by the Belgian Royal House of Gotha Coburg, openly advertising their program of the future of the human race to all the noble guests in that aristocratic hotel, Queen Astrid, another monarch murdered by the Masons just before World War II, also in Switzerland, as usual where she got accidented, just like Lady Spencer. The total reset by Pharaoh, openly presented to their Per A big house community, says in English, so not even in Flemish or in French, in English, how it will be illegal to possess land for us, the slaves, and how our cities will get entirely destroyed together with our memories of who we once were and where we came from. I quote from the royal text, it will be illegal to own the land and our cities will be folded back into the sand. You can read with me here. And they will not even remember how we once held the world in our hands and how we crushed it like a bird in our hands. They will crush the bird which stands for our freedom and liberty and make total AI, artificial intelligence, transhumanist robot zombie slaves out of us who will remember nothing. That's why there is no more head here in their agenda, what I filmed for you. And they're gonna make a reset memory and erase 
erase our memory by the help of this poison in our veins. So I made this video for you and put some music in it. Tragic music because it is tragic. I made it in 2018. Fight now or perish all. And in this video, I show one more time that terrible text, which is the truth. They are going to do it. They're already doing it now. What's coming on? What's going on now? And I already filmed that in 2018. So I quote one more time from the royal text. It will be illegal to own the land and our cities will be folded back into the sand and they will not even remember how we once held the world in our hands and how we crushed it like a bird in our hands so you better bury into the earth the books and the cds with my videos and from others into the ground now and make caches for our children to find in the world after the reset. There was a comment under my Order of the Garter film that said, if you hear those British noblemen talk, it seems like they're drunk, the awkward way they pronounce words. To which I'd like to add, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs. Yes, Pharaoh's nobility are drunk with our blood due to their endless crimes against humanity. Let's storm the castle let's storm the castle let's storm the castle